everyone, my name is Tiana. I am one of the resident marine biologists here at Gili Blancan Fushi. Today we're here to talk about the Coraline Project. It is a reef restoration project here at Gili and the goal is to help restore the reef that has been damaged um, from bleaching events that has happened around the Maldives. So next to me is a miniature model of what our nursery sort of looks like underwater and we have about 14 sets of these in our lagoon that sits about four to five meters deep. And each rope, instead of this miniature one meter, is much larger at five meters. So what we do with this project is we try to grow um, small coral fragments and grow them in our nursery until they're large enough as a mature colony before we cut them out of the rope and then plant them back onto the reef. This project started back in 2015 and has been ongoing since. We now have over 200 lines made and hanging in our nursery, and we've been starting to transplant that, them back onto our reef. And we've been very successful with the transplant. The transplant have, have attracted a lot of marine life, fish, turtles, we've seen around. So with this way, um, we're able to grow these corals with a very low tech, but efficient method. Let me show everyone how we actually make one of these lines before we hang it in our nursery. So it's a very simple, easy process that we do usually on land. And some people might ask if it's okay to handle these corals out of water when we're making these lines. Um, and actually it is okay for coral to be exposed to be air for a very short amount of period of time. Uh, this actually happens naturally in some reefs where during low tide, the water level gets kind of lower and it exposes the reef. So what we're going to do is we are going to use um, coral fragments. Here I have um, a species called Acropora nasuta and you can actually see um, if you're underwater you could see a very nice purple tip. And these fragments come from larger corals that were originally also from our nursery and I have a larger colony here and you can see these are just chipped away um, from these larger colonies. And by chipping away from the larger colony, it doesn't um, it doesn't harm them. It doesn't kill the coral at all. It's just um, sort of like grafting a plant where you can sometimes cut a stem and plant it. This is the same way where you take off a branch or a part of the coral and it will grow as long as it has a point of attachment. So it's actually a sort of asexual reproduction in a way that happens in nature as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this length of rope um, and make a coral line out of it, just like we saw from the model earlier. It's quite easy, as I mentioned. All you're gonna do is untwist the rope, and here you're gonna have a gap that is basically perfect for a coral little coral fragment that you're gonna twist in. And then there you go, you have one coral fragment in your line. And we're gonna go along and do some more along the rope. And we have another fragment here and in the gap. And you want to make sure that while you're making the line, you leave enough space between fragments. Although they're quite small now, they will grow into larger colonies, so they will need some space in between them to allow for growth. So this is what we do. We're just gonna continue making it along the line, and then we're gonna have our coral line. Okay, so now that we're done making our line, there's one more thing we need to do before we tie the line in our nursery. So we have to measure all the fragments and record their sizes. We do this usually um, three months, every three months we'll do it underwater as well. So for the first measurement, we'll just do it while we've made the line, it's easy. And then after the line's tied underwater, we have to scuba dive underwater and go measure it. So what we do is we have a caliper um, and we basically measure the longest length of the coral that we have on this piece of rope. So for example, here, I would measure the length and this, we do the measurements in millimeters. This would be 68 millimeters. And I go ahead and write it on my slate. And then I'll do this for all my fragments. This will be 41. Next fragment. 30. So once we have all the measurements for all the fragment pieces, uh, we're then able to go tie the rope underwater.
In March 2014, marine biologist Vaidotas Kirshis began the Coral Lines project. Later, Deborah Byrne and Josie Chandler joined the team and the project further developed with their knowledge and ideas. It was then overseen by Claire Baranowski and Emma Bell, and today it is expertly managed by the resort's marine biologists Sarah Davis and Tiana Wu. Gili Lanka Fushi became the first resort in the Maldives to work on a low technology and high efficiency coral reef recovery technique to support coral growth on the nearby One Palm Island Reef, which was sadly degrading. Thanks to our generous donors, we are proud to have planted 260 coral lines as of March 2020. We nurse the corals in the lagoon for one year and later transport the ropes to One Palm Island Reef. Our coral reefs are incredibly important as they contain some of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. Over time we expect the corals to grow stronger, become bigger and improve the health of the overall reef. We would like to extend this knowledge and ensure everyone has a better understanding on the importance of our planet's coral reefs. Thank you for listening and supporting our mission to restore the coral reefs.